Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for uh, joining us. Uh, my name is Manju Ramanathpura. I am not Steve Sonnenberg. Um, Steve is here with me. He's my colleague. Uh, I'm just going to take a couple of minutes to just talk about Hitachi and Hitachi data systems. And uh, my colleague, Steve Sonnenberg, is going to talk about what do we have today from OpenStack perspective. So Hitachi Data Systems is actually a wholly owned subsidiary of Hitachi Limited, based in Japan. Most of you know Hitachi more as a storage vendor, uh, because that's been our primary dominant uh, solutions in the worldwide market. But Hitachi as a overall, we've been playing in a much broader market, including storage server network devices, but even beyond the um, IT infrastructure. Um, what's been happening in the Hitachi's world is a slow transition of Hitachi data systems into many, many solutions and products beyond uh, just the storage. So if we look from uh, where we are today, specifically from an OpenStack perspective, this is what we have. On the compute side, we actually do support Nova for our suite of uh, server portfolio. And on the storage side, we support a broad range of storage platforms that includes our uh, entry point, a modular storage called Hitachi Unified Storage, and all the way up to the VSP, which is our high-end uh, enterprise storage platform. Um, so what I really want to mention in this presentation is that when you think of Hitachi, we are really not just a storage platform. What we have done with OpenStack today is enabling our storage and servers in a cloud environment. And what you will continue to see from Hitachi going forward is a much broader set of portfolios that are built on OpenStack so that our products are really compatible with any other vendor solutions that are also working in an OpenStack platform. With that, I'm going to hand it over to Steve. He's going to talk about the specific demo that we have today for you. And after this session, please do come by, drop by at the booth D12 to learn more about what we are doing with OpenStack. Steve? Thank you, Peter. Good afternoon. Um, the team in Japan has uh, developed a number of uh, very unique capabilities around OpenStack that I want to share with you. Uh, the first one we call the host deployment uh, is a mechanism that they came up with for doing a very rapid addition of a node into a um, OpenStack environment. So typically, creating an OpenStack node requires bringing up a machine, booting some kind of base image using Puppet, or something of that like, and then performing the configuration. The time involved in setting up a new machine could take uh, five to 30 minutes, depending on what you have to put on it. So the way this was accomplished in uh, significantly less time is by building a template that is a image in a cinder volume. And then, once we have the, the boot image, we can do a high-speed clone of that image and use that image to bring up multiple machines and um, without even having to do configuration. So within a couple of moments, a couple of minutes, we can bring additional nodes into the environment. So just want to show you technically how this is accomplished. In the preparation stage, um, we use the portal or, or horizon, in this case, to build a cinder volume. And that cinder volume is going to be taken from an image. In this case, we're going to be using uh, the hypervisor as the image because we want to grow our node. We want to add additional compute nodes very rapidly. So that forms a template. The template is going to be used when we want to bring up a new machine, as shown over on the, on the uh, on the far right, we clone the boot image, and we, using a cinder attach, that iSCSI volume becomes the boot volume for a node. We kick the node off, and that's actually using um, IPMI in this case. And once the node comes up, it automatically registers with the uh, Nova controller. And sure enough, we have a new hypervisor that we brought into into uh, existence into our OpenStack framework in a very short period of time. So what I suggested to the team after learning of that demo is Hitachi has another very interesting technology called LPARs, 
which are uh, machines within a machine. It's a logical partition of a machine. And why don't they uh, integrate that under the uh, ironic or using the Nova bare metal driver and demonstrate that we can launch server instances into these LPAR machines, and I'll show you why. So the reason for using uh, bare metal is, depends, there, there are a couple of motivations. Uh, sometimes you need the uh, additional performance, sometimes it's the isolation, and uh, the cost of using f actual machines is, uh, could be prohibitive. So with this LPAR technology, we can actually split a machine, split a, a server blade into multiple machines. And so if you take a look at your physical server up on the top here, and we partition it, we create these logical partitions in which we can put different quantities of processing power, memory, and even IO devices are partitioned into these, I want to call it a virtual machine because you think of something else, but into a, uh, a partition machine. So if you compare that to the bottom, in, in the virtual model that everyone's familiar with, we virtualize all of the server's resources. Memory is virtual, I.O. is virtual, uh, CPUs are virtual. In this model, we can actually split the hardware and we can control, we can dedicate it, or we can, we can share the equipment, again, within a single server. So here's another, uh, another image. Uh, in this case, we're using our chassis system. It's called a CB500. There are eight s s processors in the system, and each of those can divide its resources in up to 30, 30 LPARs in a single blade. So with this, we have practically native performance. We have isolation and we can uh, take advantage of the exact resources that we need. We don't have to worry about competition from other systems getting I.O. hungry or uh, CPU hungry and so forth. So just a couple of uh, slides that are uh, from the demo, which I'm going to invite you to take a look at. Um, this is using the Hitachi portal system. It's actually a demo server, very similar in, uh, in Roll to Horizon. And what we've done is we've created a new section called LPAR Management, and you can use that just like you would for launching a virtual machine. You can launch it into a logical partition. Um, you can also do this through Horizon. In this case, we're going to be using the bare, bare metal driver, um, which is part of uh, Nova, or pre-ironic. And by selecting the flavor, you can pick what type of LPAR that you want to use to, to house that instance. Once it's running, it looks just like a virtual machine. Um, it's got the same characteristics and the, uh, similar mechanisms for controlling that machine, for starting and stopping, and so forth. Under the covers, if you were to look at our blade management system, you'd see that in a, in a, in a given blade, we've caught it up into a set of LPARs. And each of those LPARs has dedicated memory or shared memory that includes uh, devices, devices for networking, devices for, um, which can also be used for fiber channel over ethernet, and uh, uh, of course, the fiber channel, which is one of the native protocols between the blade systems and all of our storage products. So an example of terminating looks, looks identical. All it does is just freeze up the LPAR, and that can be reused again as needed. So how does it work, and how can we uh, bring up systems very quickly using LPARs? Well, one of, the, one of the major factors in the speed that it takes to launch a machine is the time that it takes to set it up for execution. Um, I mean, there's a number of parts involved, the networking, but in terms of setting up the execution format, we've got to copy an image from Glance, bring it into memory, or set up the ephemeral storage, and boot that machine. When you're using an LPAR, what we do is we simply arrange for that LPAR to boot the image, and if we marry that capability with the same capability that we use with the host provisioning demonstration, where we were using a pre-formatted image, an image that is ready, ready to boot off of, then the time that it takes is significantly reduced. 
So part of the magic here is that this is teamed with our enterprise storage. Uh, Hitachi storage arrays have a number of important capabilities that allow us to do some of these things. Um, they are not commodity hardware, They're designed for enterprise reliability, enterprise scale performance. They perform storage virtualization, which is the ability to harness um, multiple storage products under a single management umbrella. They provide dynamic storage pooling, which allows you to take multiple disks and treat them as a large storage pool, tiering, data protection, and migration. And the feature that we would be most interested in here is the ability to take a snapshot of an image, and this can be done in a, in a, a small number of seconds. So the first step is to build, build an executable format of your system, of the image, of the instance that you want to run. In this case, I've called them gold LPARs. And once we have that image, we can simply tell the uh, LPAR engine to invoke or go through a boot cycle and boot that image very much as if we were bringing up physical hardware, but uh, without the physical hardware. Now, there is a cost of bringing up uh, a system, just like hardware. It goes through a post cycle. Um, and even in the, the post cycle, LPARs don't require the extensive uh, physical tests, they, they run a special purpose uh, BIOS that other physical servers would re require. So the end result is we have very fast machine startup, isolation between instances, exact control of the resources we want to share, the ability to match the same density that we would have in virtualizing the resources across the server. Now we can partition them uh, across the server with stronger guarantees for performance, lower latency, and this all allows us to take advantage of the increase in uh, server performance in a way that we can control. So I would like to invite you to come by our booth. It's D12, it's on the opposite end of the hall. Uh, Seiji would be happy to give you a demonstration of the host provisioning or LPAR provisioning um, using our OpenStack environment. And there's also a raffle. Please uh, enjoy the rest of the show if you have any questions. Got a moment or two. Okay, thank you very much.